this point in your life, you probably have run into somebody that has said, hey, I can give you something for totally free. Well, everything has a cost. And if it says it's free, there's usually some small print that says otherwise. In this case study, we're going to take a look at drilling down to the root cause of front end response time and show that the cost of optimizing is not always free. In this next screen, I'm going to show you the HP 3PAR system dashboard. This allows you to see the health of the HP 3PAR system in a single pane. In this view, you see a bubble chart summarizing the relative I.O. rate and the performance health of the read and write throughput, the overall front end response time, the front end read response time, and the front end write response time. Along the Y axis, you see the two different HP 3PAR systems, and along the X axis, it displays the key risk indicators. Blue dots represent the relative busyness, green dots are areas of low availability risk, and yellow is representing some availability risk, and red, if there was some, indicates significant risk to the performance uh, of the environment. Thresholds are determined based on various modeling techniques to provide a sensible starting point based on the storage configuration and the workloads. In this situation, you will see that Monetis underscore 2894 underscore 5 is showing some warning around the front end read response time and actually has a yellow bubble. In the title of the dashboard, you'll see a rating of 13. That's in the upper right hand side. And the rating system is designed to accurately identify potential problems as opposed to flagging false positives. So next, we're going to drill down to see why we had a warning. And we're going to do this by just clicking on the bubble in a row. Uh, and we're taken to the time series chart for this system that we clicked on. The front end read response time chart is now in focus. The single line on this chart represents the weighted front end read response time for the storage system on a TIS underscore 2894 underscore 5. The background colors represent various dynamic thresholds. The lighter area indicates a safe area where the system response time is performing well. The light brown warning area represents the threshold for response times in which system the system is not performing very well, and the darker area, exception area, represents the threshold for response times that are simply bad. The re rating is based on the percentage of observations above the warning or exception thresholds. And in this case, it's about 13% of the time that the response time exceeds the warning thresholds. This is designed to provide proactive uh, insight into potential problem areas so that a user can investigate the risk and determine appropriate actions prior to the issue actually becoming significant. Next, we're going to drill down to the associated AO policies by clicking on the line in the chart or next to the storage system name in the legend. At the AO policy level, the rating is actually higher because it's applying the same thresholds but just for a subset of the data that's having the issue. In this case, the rating for the AO policy base underscore ESX underscore AO is actually rated at 0.56. And you can see that from around 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., the response time for base underscore ESX underscore AO is elevated. By clicking on the line representing base underscore ESX underscore AO, we can actually see the volumes affected, and we'll do that in this next slide. The chart now in focus shows the top 30 volumes by front end read response time. We can easily pick out the volume that has the highest read response time during the 5 to 7 p.m. period. The volume name is WRHQ192 underscore A underscore FCOD, and by clicking on identify, we're going to see some more information about this volume. Now let's take a look at the top 30 volumes in that base underscore ESX underscore AO policy by throughput. Clearly, WRHQ192 underscore A underscore FCOD has the most throughput during the problem period, peaking around 250 megabytes. A couple of things to note. First of all, the system name is GZGM499 and the majority of the utilized capacity is on the 450 gig CPG. This chart represents the front end read response time for each port on the 3PAR. You'll see that there's four ports that peak at the same time as the volumes and these include 
ports 0, 2, 1, 0, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, and 1, 2, 2. Let's look at the throughput of those ports. This chart shows the front end throughput in megabytes per, per second for each of the selected ports on the 3 par. None of these ports are near their 8 gigabit per second port limit. In fact, the read throughput is only reaching about 330 megs a second overall. Let's go ahead and drill down to the associated volumes. This shows the throughput for volumes associated with the port 1, 2, 2. So you can see in this um, chart, we're essentially concluding that volume WRHQ192 underscore A underscore FCOD is the prime culprit on this particular uh, port in question. And if we look at the back end response time for the back end drives, the response time from the 5 to 7 p.m. period was very low. So the front end performance issue that we were seeing is unrelated to back end desaturation. In this case, we know that the volume response times closely align to the front end response times. We also know that the back end drives are not saturated. Further investigation revealed that the policy migrations for the policy named base underscore ESX underscore AO happened every night at 5 p.m. And when the time period for the policy migrations was shifted to a different period, the latency actually moved with that policy time shift. This is a case where the internal system workload impacted the front end user response time. In conclusion, nothing is free. There were front end impacts in terms of response time, but the fiber ports weren't constrained and the back end wasn't constrained. And when we shifted the AO policy migrations to a later period, the response time increases on the front end actually followed the shift. So the conclusion is that for this particular system, there was some overhead with the AO policy migration activity that impacted the front end volume response time so when you schedule those policy migrations, make sure you do it during a period where the online users will be impacted minimally.